Hello everybody out here, around here and all around the world. This is Booktube and this is Rainer from Rainier Books speaking. My weekly wrap up. You see my Panama hat, the original Panama hat. You see my shirt a little bit, a little bit. I have some buttons open here. I have some buttons open here on my shirt. It is summer outside. I wanted to film on the balcony, but there's much too much sun there, so I cannot really look into the sun um, and, and film. So I decided to go inside to my living room and film here. It's really warm in Stockholm now, 22 degrees. And here's the weekly wrap up with the books that I've read and the books I'm planning to read. Like uh, Sarah always says from Hardcover Hearts, according to my mood, depending on my mood. Last week I was doing a trip, as you might have seen on the channel. I went to Wilhelmina in southern Lapland, which is about 830 kilometers north, um, northwest of Stockholm in the inland, as we call it, in the inside of the land, not along the coast, but in the inland. And there it was still snowy. I saw snow, I saw ice. Look at the vlog that I did and you know more about it. Uh, it's a great rural part of Sweden. Apropos rural, I read last week I finished one book which is an ARC. I'm going to make a single review about this book. The book is called The Forgotten Girls about uh, the prospect of the life of women in rural America. And this is the story. It will be published by the end of May. I think on May 30 it will be published. Penguin was so kind to send me an ARC of it, uh, an electronic copy of the book on my Kindle. And I really read and finished this uh, in like three days. It went, it surpassed all the books that I actually wanted to read because I got this offer and I sort of clicked yes. And then when I went to Wilhelmina, I only wanted to travel light. I didn't want to take so much luggage with me. So I decided to take the Kindle and it was there up on my Kindle. And so I started reading The Forgotten Girls, which is a book by Monica Potts, a woman who is a journalist and uh, now also a writer, a publicist. She has, um, she was born in a town called Clinton, Arkansas. Arkansas is one of the poorest states in the United States. I think it's the second poorest after Mississippi. And um, she was born in Clinton, the small town in Arkansas. Grew up there. There's a lot of evangelicals living there and life is very traditional. It is sort of MAGA country. A lot of people there have voted and still vote for Donald Trump, although they have nothing in common with the billionaire Donald Trump. They are poor instead, and uh, but they want to make America great again. They are sort of chasing a dream that actually never really was there for them, at least. Clinton, Arkansas is a very small city. It's a small town, lots of white folks living there, not, not very diverse, but the people who live there are mostly poor. And the women who grow up there, they get pregnant at a very early age. They have religion hanging over them, evangelicalism hanging over them that is sort of trying to tell them how to live and that the most important thing a woman can do is marry, give birth to children, educate the children and be a good wife to your husband. That is basically the life. And this is the friendship of two women as well in this book, The Forgotten Girls, which I really like because it's, um, Monica, who grows up in Clinton, Arkansas, but also her best friend, Darcy, who grows up in Clinton, Arkansas. And Darcy is in school, in middle school. She's an eighth grade student, exactly like a great student, exactly like Monica. But there's certain differences in the families and in the structure, in the situation that they have. Both families are poor. I will go into more of that when I do the single review, I promise you. But uh, it's a great memoir and it really taught me a lot about of giving, sort of enlarging the puzzle, the picture that I have of the United States of America and to answer some of the questions. Why is there so much poverty? Why do so many people vote for Donald Trump? Why is there so much conservatism? And where is it actually? A lot of these questions were answered. It's a great book, it's a great memoir, and I really loved it. On Monday, and uh, I was reading Poverty by America by Matthew Desmond, a book that actually sort of has a lot of parallels, of course, 
to the memoir because even in the memoir by Monica Potts there is a lot of research, a lot of statistics, that numbers that also Matthew Desmond uses in his book and his study on poverty by America, a book that I will read on during the course of the next week. But I came back on Wednesday night and I actually went to the gym a couple of times. I will go there, um, well, two, two, two hours from now probably. And I also am listening to Monica Ali's book Brick Lane, the one that made her famous 20 years ago, still do that. And I have come like 140, 150 pages in. This is a book about Nazreen, a very young woman who is gift, who is um, given to a much older husband, promised to a much older husband. She lives, actually comes from Bangladesh, but she goes to the husband in London and uh, she gives birth to a son. And uh, it is about the Bengali community in London and about the Bengali family ties that she has at home. Very interesting book and very colorful written and very intimately written uh, from the perspective of this young woman in London, Monica Ali's Brick Lane. Brick Lane, for those of you who have never been to London, is a very famous street in the city of London. I haven't read a single story uh, from A Multitude of Sins by Richard Ford, but it's also lying on my table. Uh, apparently, uh, don't say apparently that often. Uh, Richard Ford has written these stories. Uh, they were published in 2001. Written in not, between 1996 and 2001, these are stories about relationships, about heterosexual relationships, when man and woman stories, uh, good relationships, but more often relationships that have troubles. And A Multitude of Sins is the title of that book. Then I got from the library, and it's this going to be my sixth read from the Women's Prize long list, that I know that those of you who read this book were shocked, were absolutely shocked that it didn't make the shortlist. This is The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff. I got a copy from the library and I will have four weeks on me to read this. I was surprised that I got four weeks because I thought there might be a long queue and then you would only get like two weeks for a quick read. But I got four weeks for this, which means that the demand after The Bandit Queens is not that high here in Stockholm. And I also will pick up Tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, I will go to the library and pick up Tara M. Stringfellow's book Memphis, which I will try, give a try. I'm really not so enthusiastic about the author, Tara M. Stringfellow, because she has sort of, uh, um, yes, she has done some very unnice things on the social media against all people who don't like or have criticism against her book. She's pretty rude uh, against them, and that makes me really inclines me um, not really to uh, be too enthusiastic to look forward to this book but I heard that it's good and uh, I want to give it a chance so want to sort of separate the work from the person maybe these are the books that I'm reading in the world there are things happening yesterday last night was the biggest cultural event in Sweden many people for Sweden Many Swedes don't, who don't go to museums, who don't read books, they love the Eurovision Song Contest. And for them, it's like a football, like a World Cup in football. And yesterday, Sweden won the Eurovision Song Contest. Laureen, with her song Tattoo, won the Eurovision Song Contest. And let me quote the lyrics of that song. I don't want to go, but baby, we both know. This is not our time. It's time to say goodbye until we meet again, because this is not the end. It will come a day when we will find our way. Violence playing and the angels crying. When the stars align, then I'll be there. No, I don't care about them all, because all I want is to be loved, and all I care about is you. You're stuck on me like a tattoo. No, I don't care about the pain. I'll walk through fire and through rain. Just to get closer to you, you're stuck on me like a tattoo. The European juries love this song. They love the lyrics and they love the show. And that's why the European juries in like 40 countries gave this song by far the most points, which resulted in Sweden winning the Eurovision Song Contest for this beautiful lyrics and for this very mediocre song. I really didn't like the music. I watched the Eurovision Song Contest more like a spectacle. 
uh, to me. Uh, yesterday I loved Finland's song, which probably has not a much better text, but it had a lot of uh, sort of, it was a little bit kinkier, it was like uh, hip-hop-ish, it was um, more a little bit like, uh, be it had beautiful beats in it, so it was dancing, more like a dancing tune, and people in the audience in Liverpool, where the Eurovision Song Contest was held, absolutely loved it, and they were always scoring the cha-cha-cha, because the song is called cha-cha-cha. So Finland was the real winner, the winner of the hearts, and Sweden uh, won this with just to get closer to you, you're stuck on me like a tattoo. Next year we will have, we will show us the contest in Sweden. And you know that I'm a dual citizen, I'm Swede, so I'm very glad for Sweden that Sweden won. But on the other hand, I'm a German as well. And Germany, again, was finished last, 24th and last in the Eurovision Song Contest with like 18 points or something. But the Germans, they don't care so much about the contest. They watch it, some, some of them watch it. Some of them, most of them don't, but some of them watch it and they think, okay, ha, we finished last, uh, so what? Next year, there's a, no, there's a new show. So that was the Eurovision Song Contest, which is very, very important to Sweden. And uh, what else happened this week? Donald Trump went on CNN, he had a town hall. I don't know if you saw this, but I was really appalled that CNN, which sort of identifies like a neutral or, or even a liberal outlet gave Donald Trump, who is a uh, indicted uh, misogynist and abuser, such great space on the channel and let him speak without really saying no to that. Let him speak uh, in a very, in the way that we know him since 2016. And here sort of the circle will be complete because it's really still interesting and still a question for me why 80 million people can vote for such a person. Read The Forgotten Girls by Monica Potts and then you know at least why some of them do. Thanks very much for watching the video and I see you very soon in a tag video about Rome and Italy. Arrivederci!